everyone. Today, I would love to introduce Stephanie Lecalleg from Lausanne. I just went to her restaurant. It is a fascinating and and really great experience. I love every dishes that she made. How do you feel being a Michelin star chef? Uh, I think uh, when I arrive at the Georges Saint, because when I decide to to become a, a chef. Um, you know, I, I'm from a, a very, um, a very simple family. So my culture is not the Michelin star restaurant mm. when I was young. Uh, I, of course. I, I don't know Michelin restaurant, Michelin star restaurant. And, um, and so when I decided to become a chef, my dream was to have my small restaurant, ma- making uh, a good uh, filet de bœuf rossini, mm. etc. Very classical, very simple. But when I uh, discovered the Georges V, when I see, wow, the, the quality, uh, the experience, the, I say, okay, I have a revelation, you know? <laughs> I say, okay, that will be my life. And I just want to be able one day to become a Michelin star chef, but maybe one Michelin star. But the problem is when you, you get your first Michelin star, yeah. And you, you want, want more. Say, yeah. you want a second one, <laughs> and when and you, you get want your three. second one, yeah. okay. So it's a never-ending story, but it challenges you every day. When did you start knowing that you want to be a chef? I think I was a little girl uh, when I decide. Uh, I don't know if I decide to become a chef, but I decide to cook because I love food. I uh, grow up in a family uh, uh, where the the sharing at the table, uh, cooking uh, together was very important. So it gave me uh, this this feeling that food will be my life. Wow. And what age was that? Yeah, maybe seven or eight years old. So seven, eight years old. Yeah, maybe. You were in the kitchen cooking instead yeah, of playing. Yeah, playing, with, not playing. with doll, but uh, but with dough, uh, making small uh, small pieces of cakes and uh, playing with that. So then, when did you decide that you want to really become a professional chef? I was fourteen. I was fourteen when I decided 14 that. Fourteen years yeah, old, so young. Yeah, fourteen years old. When I uh, I remember I, I I went to see my mother and tell her, uh, okay. I know, I'm sure. Okay, I can make studies, classical studies, but you know, my life is becoming a chef. So uh, what do you think if I start a, a kitchen school? And my parents together say, okay, if, uh, if it is what you want to do, we will give you, the, um, uh, we'll give you, uh, all, you all we can. Uh, to support you. Yeah, to support you. And uh, we will find a school for you and, wow. uh, and go. Amazing! Yeah, trust what an understanding trust in me at first. Uh, parents that you have. So, okay, industry, hospitality industry, chef industry, very few women leading the kitchen. Mm-hmm. Was it very tough for you to yeah. fight, in, I mean, to the top position? Yeah, it was not easy. And uh, so when I was 14, it's uh, quite like uh, 13 years ago. So my parents trust in me. And uh, in, a, in, a, in a period where chefs are not rock star like yes, today, yes, you know, yes, yes, yes. Uh, there is less um, women chef than today. Much less. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it was, uh, yeah, it was great for them. And of course, when I, when I start uh, uh, my job, uh, young cooker. Uh, we were uh, at the Georges Saint, for example, where, where I start. Um, we were two young ladies. Only two in only the whole kitchen. Only two for an 80 people in the, in the team. What? Yeah. It's not even 10%. Yeah, yeah. Wow. That is, was it, um, and how was the competition? Is it very competitive? It was, uh, it was a little bit hard. For, for sure. But, uh, you know, when you are sincere, when you work very hard, yeah. uh, men's can, uh, men's are able to see uh, you have a potential, you have talent. So after, they support you. So now, okay, when you decide 
to cook to be a chef. So you could be a pastry chef. No. You could be. No, and you, no. And you I know, was sure because you know I, that. Love, I love salty <laughs> food. I love uh, I love fish. I love vegetables. I, I love to have a good steak. And I, I, I don't have the feeling on the pastry part. So so I was sure I want to become a, a, kitchen, a kitchen chef, yeah? 70. There are a lot of, I think, looking at all the success of the chef and big stardom, there must, there must be many young people who want to become a chef. So what is your advice and how could they achieve? At first, you need absolutely to be passionate. You know, you, you have to get the fire inside of you. Uh, you also have definitely to, to work very hard, okay, and never give up. Never give up is yeah. your personality. Yeah. So yeah. even yeah. if you're very yeah. talented, yeah. if you don't have that determination, that personality. Definitely, because it's hard, but it's, uh, but it's so beautiful. You know, it's the most beautiful job, most beautiful. Uh, I, think, I think when you say beautiful, it's only when you, the day you can create your own menu. Yeah, but but you know all the all the steps are, are very interesting. Even uh, when you start, uh, the, the connection with the chef, the transmission with the chef is very uh, it's very rich of experience. So so all the step in the career is important. But I think you you are special because you met your husband in the kitchen. Everything with yeah, you yeah. is about kitchen. Definitely, my right? life is about kitchen. Definitely, <laughs> and your whole life yeah. is evolving from yeah. that point. And then now is you have a whole team. You have your second family yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, and definitely, and the world. You, you're true. You're true right. because here it's really a second family. Because if you don't have this teamwork, this I mean, they believe in you, and then it's very hard to create. You are nobody, you know, you can, uh, you can be the, the best chef in the world. If you don't have the team with you, together stronger, you, can, you cannot get two Michelin star. You cannot uh, uh, make uh, people at table happy. It's impossible, you know, alone. It's impossible to, to, to have the... One of the dish I tried the other day was langoustine. And I thought after this, I said, this is really Asian, very Japanese, because it's seared, it's not fully cooked. So one big question, are you influenced by Asian cooking? Not. I love Asian cooking. I love the, the Japanese food. I love Chinese food. But I, I don't think I am influenced by that. Mm. But uh, in my philosophy of cuisine, uh, I try always to do my best to respect the product. So at first, when I create a dish, my, my first reflection is, okay, what I am attending of a langoustine or another product? And after that, I try to do my best to, to respect that and give the feeling that the product is very, very pure, you know? It's amazing because I usually don't even eat shellfish, but I decided that when I come to try it, I would try it every single, and that was, I actually dream of it for someone who doesn't even like shellfish. Yeah. It's pretty amazing because it's, you have this original taste, very natural, because when I was having it, I was thinking, wow, this is so Japanese. And and then I feel that also I feel that you you really you have a great fusion your caviar and that thick toast and inside with this potato souffle I don't know how you how this come out with it's amazing Thank it you. looks great yeah. and it tastes good yeah. usually when it looks great usually it doesn't really necessarily taste good yeah it's one of my signature dish seventy caviar dish that you have to explain your caviar yeah. dish 2015 so uh 2015 i created this dish uh it became it became my signature dish because uh it was a uh, it was uh, a dish i i prepare for my family for a christmas you know but not in this uh in this uh form um i just uh want to to taste the caviar my parents never had caviar before so Oh. I want to cook for them a dish with caviar. So I made a, a very a light uh, potato puree uh, with cream a little bit, with sorrel and with caviar. It was very simple, but it was not beautiful, you know. 
but it was very tasty and amazing. We have the caviar, we have the, the, the sweetness of the potato, creamy, etc. And I decided to think, how can I have a very catchy dish, very beautiful, but with beautiful. this taste? And it might take uh, four, five, six months uh, to create that. And, uh, and since uh, that, it, it's one of my signature dishes. Yeah. I can dream again tonight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go back to talk about your journey. Your journey becomes the top chef. So you were in, um, in George Sang, and I was just told that you met your husband there as well. Yeah. And um, so you were, how much, I mean, how long do you work in, 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 George, uh, in George Sang? In Le Cinque, I work right. at Le Sang. I work during uh, four years. Uh, I learn a lot, a lot of uh, of things because Philippe Lejeune was a very, very famous chef, very talented chef, three Michelin stars, meilleur ouvrier de France, and uh, Georges V was a, a very classical cuisine. Yes. So it's very good to start for for a young cook. It's very, it's very good to start with a because you classic. Learn all the, yeah. yeah, it's very good to start with the classic chef because you can really uh, well learn uh, your job. Mm -hmm. So it was a good start for me. So after four years, you went, you went and followed other chefs. Uh, no, after four years, uh, I go to to work in south of France. Uh, yeah, with another great chef, Philippe Jourdain, meilleur warrior de France. With him, uh, I become sous chef, and we get together a uh, second Michelin star. Oh, and then after hey, that's that's very young. Yeah, you were... I was 26 when I was his sous chef, and we 26 years yeah, old yeah, sous yeah, chef, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Very young, star. and and yeah. a, and a woman sous chef yeah. as well. Yeah, so wow. it was a great promotion for me, great, uh, great, um, and a great also uh, challenge because uh, uh, become sous chef in a two Michelin star restaurant. Uh, um, Help me to become uh, a chef. Yeah, of course, of step course. by step. Yeah, step by step. And then when uh, Philippe leave uh, Terre Blanche, uh, I take his place. So wow, I became wow. chef. So at what age at that time? Uh, 28. And in the same time. Wow. <laughs> yeah, in the same time, 28, I win a top chef competition. How did you get into your Top Chef? It was 2011, right? Yeah. And then how do you get into Top Chef competition? So what dish did you actually make to make you... Ah, a lot, a lot of dish during the competition. But for the, for the final, uh, I make a dish with morel mushroom, as I fresh asparagus. Uh, I have a, a very beautiful sea bass for the main dishes with uh, homemade spices. And for the dessert, it was a, a creation around the olive oil. <laughs> yeah. And then, okay, so... After you get your top chef, is it immediately escalate yeah, you to a big yeah. stardom yeah. and then you're headhunted by other restaurants? Yeah, because it's a, you know, the, a TV show, it's very, uh, it gives you... Uh, marketing. It, yeah, marketing. And uh, at, at the end, uh, you win time in your career. And that's why, uh, th that's what uh, Philippe Jourdain told me. Uh, he told me, Stephanie, if you do top chef, do it and do it very well because you know uh, it could uh, give you 10 years on your career, you know. And that's true because uh, after Top Chef, uh, I have the proposition to become the chef at the Prince de Gall Hotel, Avenue Georges V, so near the Georges V, yeah, just yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. No, right next door. Uh, and I was only uh, 13 years old, so it was amazing for me to become a chef in the palace okay, in, uh, at that in Paris. Time, were you married? Yeah, definitely. You I get married, married in 21. I was 21 when I, when I get married. 21, get married. 22, my first son. 20, oh my 23, my second son. <laughs> How did you manage? Uh, I mean, yeah. I'm sorry. You got married at such a young age. And working in a kitchen, there's no social life and of course how are you going to manage your family life i think i have a, a great partner because my husband is, a, is an amazing man uh, he always give me the support so in the family or in the business he's, he's always with me we we are a, a, a great team you know we are together in the family and in the business now so uh, i think the issue is is really to have a partner in life understanding what you do and give you the support 
you told me your your husband is also chef. Yeah. So the both of you <laughs> work. Your children. How do you spend you know, time you with know, your children? Ah, we try. You know, we have less time, but better time. Quality you know? time. Yeah, quality time. Definitely, and and always since they 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 are born, uh, we also. Uh, uh, we are always uh, sorry. We always try to do our best to give them all the attention they need. Small time, the short. The time is short, definitely. But we are hundred percent with them when we are with them. So bravo, bravo! It's in- incredible. Thank such you. a young age and have a family and still manage to have such a successful career. So even the dishes, do you create together with your with your husband? Uh, for Lassen, no. For Lassen, it's really uh, a very personal uh, cuisine here. Yeah, you know, it's it's my it's my first baby here. Yeah. But uh, for the other restaurant, because uh, with David, uh, I opened uh, another restaurant last year uh, called Vive, and we have also uh, uh, um, delicatessen and pastries. So oh, really, for where the, is it? Yeah, in the near here, five minutes here. Okay, from later here. So on, you, you need to go. You need to I go. have to go. Of course, I have to go. And um, for the other restaurant, uh, yeah, we, we, we make the creation, the identity, and uh, all the, the, the recipes together, yeah. So now, you have been work. you worked, before you opened here, you were in um, Princess de Gaulle for eight years? Yeah, correct. Eight years, yeah. mm-hmm. and then you came here, mm-hmm. and you have this restaurant, so all the decoration, the whole experience you created. Yeah. This is after being... St- eight years and you know what you want and how about the menu is it the same as your last lesson no no no, it's it's a bit different because uh here it's my little home you know it's a part of me here so when you are in your own restaurant uh, it's uh, more easy to to go where you want to go and give uh, to the guest uh, an experience more uh, intimate you know intimate intimity you know uh, it's very important to for me to give uh, an intimate experience here intimate intimate, intimate sorry in a, an intimate experience here so so in my small house because it's very small it's very cozy you know and it's i want very intimate yeah intimate and very warm you know i want something different when i create here i don't want uh, another two michelin star restaurant with no identity with uh with no uh, human vibes you know so i want to create something very different a, a new experience but why do you have the same name Lassen. Because the concept is the same. Because the, the kitchen is really it's an open a kitchen, bi- an open kitchen, but really a big part of the experience, you know. And it's like a theater, Mm-mm-mm. a little bit. So we we keep the name Lassen for that. I know some chef like um, um, Sanderson who passed away. And he actually gave up his Michelin three star because he said that it's too restrictive because he doesn't always want to make a lobster caviar and all that. He wants he wanted that freedom. I mean, to be more creative instead mm. of restrictive. Would you do you think that that will be what you would be feeling? Are you feeling restrictive when you do no, creation? No, I'm not feeling restrictive. I think the the, the Michelin also change. Uh, no, no, I, I want to keep my freedom in, in creation and in the, in the experience we, we give to the guest. And I think uh, today, uh, we have more chef um, with individuality, with a very strong identity, and uh, they, they have three Michelin stars. So I think you, you can be free, you can be creative, and also get to a three Michelin star. So, I mean, do you take any Asian influence? Do you go to Asia to taste food to be inspired? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love Asia. It's always a, a, a great inspiration for me. Uh, I think it's uh, always in movement, you know. Uh, it's very exciting to, to, to go to uh, Hong Kong, for example, or Tokyo. Uh, and I think uh, there is a vision uh, of food uh, very interesting for me. So uh, I take sometimes ideas or technique, but I adapt with course, French product course. and I don't want a, a, a fusion, you know, it's not my culture, but I take some inspiration. 
because and honestly the fusion is starting is really starting from australia yeah. um and of the fusion food and then now is spreading because even for chinese food we talk about yeah. contemporary yeah. chinese food food and i i see your french food is completely contemporary style yeah, what what are you going i mean how do you see about uh you know people now the young i mean this different generation of people do you still think that they would love all these really i like this complicated people call complicated fussy food but i said it's very sophisticated or do they do you think that they would just like the bistro food how how are you think thinking about i think there evolving? is a place for all the all kind of restaurants you know because it's not the same moment of consumption you know uh sometimes and and i am an example sometimes uh i want to go in a bistro because Ooh. i have a 45 yes, minutes and I, and i want a, an easy food i want the beautiful beef or a, and sometimes i want something uh more experience more uh, and i got in a michelin star or uh, in, no michelin star but with a very creative chef so i think it depends of the moment but i think there is a the place for all the kinds of restaurants it's important to to keep our culture but to give a, a modern twist in our cuisine you know because the, the world is in evolution and and the 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 cuisine need to also have an evolution so it evolve from the contemporary culture yeah right? definitely the lifestyle. definitely definitely so how do you see yourself in the next 10 years uh i, I don't what is your you know what is your ambition now you know I think I am I am a very lucky woman. I uh, I worked very hard, but I also receive uh, all I need all, all, and and even more than I can uh, dream. So, uh everything can stop here. I can be happy. But <laughs> but uh maybe for me and my team we can continue to uh to uh, grow up the experience in at the table and uh, if uh, one day one michelin uh, one more michelin star come i tell you so your, welcome your, your food is three michelin star is uh, not thank two you, i thank keep you. on telling thank you. telling every we all sat down and said how can this be two it should be three <laughs> Thank I don't you. know, ma'am, but thank, thank you. you, Stephanie. Thank it's, you very it, much. It's great have, having you and discussing about, especially the French contemporary food culture, because we are so, you know, all our imagination about French is very heavy food with a lot of sauces. And, that. and then now you give us a new twist. Thank, thank you so you. much. My pleasure. Thank you.